Hello everyone and welcome to another set of exhibition ma- or to a set of exhibition matches today we are going to be doing because we don't have any tournament match today. So, Lost Troll Season 2 started a couple weeks ago, but unfortunately the tournament organizer has been very busy with work, Crow. So, we are going to be on what appears to be an unofficial hiatus. Nothing's been announced, but it's been two weeks since the last tournament and I haven't seen anything come up. So, my guess is there's going to be just a hiatus. In the meantime, might as well throw up a couple replays just to have at least something. Seems appropriate to keep them team-oriented. Besides, I had a backlog of requests, so I can get through a few of them today. Anyhow, so the first game is going to be on Nuclear Winter. and be Flumbi India Ray Acid and Bakahatsu up against Romix Chum Toad Maj and Catastrophe. Being a 4v4, of course, we do have a couple of air or an airplane on each side. We have an airplane on each side, alright. Acid and Maj on the air. Surprisingly also double cloaky, but considering the fact that Nuclear Winter is such a tall map, it kind of makes sense to have them covering multiple lanes like that. Yes, you can use plates, but not at that distance. Alright, opening up. Got a little bit of Mumble Clan getting some damage done to the south. Should be able to take that very quickly, actually, already. Jump Toad's grabbing those metal extractors like there's no tomorrow. Though, to be fair, Western Team has been grabbing the north side pretty effectively as well, so it's f still fairly even. And honestly, West Team was quite a bit more forward. Well, actually, no, I shouldn't say that. That's not entirely accurate. Their... India Ray is quite a bit more forward specifically, though, to be fair, Bakuatsu decided to play very far in the back, despite the fact that they're playing... An well, yeah, despite the fact that they're playing Anthbots. I mean, that Anthbots are a slow factory. They really could use that speed advantage from being that much closer to the front lines. But anyway, that being said, Mumble Clan, in fact, the ones starting further forward, but they haven't really gone backwards. Like, there's just a ton of metal strategy that haven't been claimed, whereas Western Team, while indeed they did start a bit farther back than Mumble Clan, were much, have been much more consistent about taking the back line metal strategy they have really full access to. Still, though, we should be seeing Mumble Clan take, as they're taking the front lines, just make it that much harder for West Team. Like, it'll be even for now. Mumble Clan will eventually, eventually take the back lines, and when that happens, then it's going to be tough for Western Team. But even then, already we're seeing Chum Toad throwing around Glaives everywhere, really putting India Array in a terrible spot. I mean, the few forward expansions they've taken are being wrecked, and now their factory is... Under some threat, probably won't go down just thanks to all the support units coming in. But that's still a few more metal extractors going down. That's still potentially a bunch of stuff in the back lines. Same time! Ah, oh, the Scorch is coming in from Romux. Nice distraction allowing the Glaives to get even more room to play with this pretty much empty base. Yet another metal extractor goes down. Mumble Clan maintaining the advantage while also starting to expand a little to the back and gets rid of a crane too. Nicely done there, getting rid of actually the only constructor for acid. Fortunately, the Glaives slightly missed Micro going right into the middle of the ducks, getting torn apart. But still, they managed to do a lot of work. Same time, though, we do have Flumby coming around the back, trying to get a run by, but finding nothing. So overall, this has been a devastating start. Western team still managing to hold on. Thankfully for them, there have been enough expansions over to the north from Flumby that it hasn't been a total loss. But still, that was that was a lot of pressure on in India Ray that they like they clearly were not prepared for. But again, being 4v4, three other players, and those three other players have been able to make up for that loss. Still, though, Mumble Clan, it's just a matter of time as they're taking the back lines and start basically getting way ahead economically. For now, though, it remains even, and for now, it's still a matter of trying to defend the frontline expansions that they have taken, which is proven to be a bit of a challenge. Bakuatsu looking to challenge the south, and it looks like we've got India Ray looking to challenge the center, but finding very little to work with. Same time, though, is it Maj? Going for defense here? Sorry, I'm just going over to the north, not really the way to go. India Ray, however... Getting some revenge. Not a huge amount, but still, it's something. Puts them on the board as far as mech skills go. 
Back about to, however, in a much better position. The duck's coming around the side. Nothing can save this conjurer if it's not able to get away now. Needs to run, needs to cloak, needs to keep moving. Glaive's coming in to try to save the day, but unfortunately they are all out of position. The Swifts, however, are able to save the day, coming in from Maj. Good timing there. The Conjurer remains alive. That is the... Or for now... The Conjurer needs to not get killed. That is the most important thing here. If that Conjurer stays alive, the rebuild can happen very quickly. Although, to be fair, looks like Bakuatsu didn't really want to let that happen. Regardless, putting a huge amount of metal just right here. No one can take this southern expansion. Bakuatsu has claimed it. At the same time, over to the north, we do have Catastrophe coming along. And fighting back against everything Flumby has built up. Fortunately, not mentioned to get all that much in, in yet. Dillon's never over the north. Bakuatsu still putting a lot of hurt in over the south. Phoenix is coming in to at least clear up some of that. Does soften up quite a few of the ducks, allowing for Romix's commander to finish them off along with the Lotus. Over to the north, though, Flumby's commander under heavy fire should be saved. These vehicles are likely to stave off the knights. But Flumby's commander still getting increasingly pressured. However, Romex has pretty much lost the center. Same thing, they are, have taken a lot of the back line, but ultimately, despite the front line of Sultan, the really strong opening, Western team is just winning on metal. Like, static metal, not even counting overdrive and reclaim. Western team is still just held onto or re-grabbed metal extractors as necessary, whereas Mumble Clan, they've lost actual territory, not just losing metal extractors here and there, but... At the same time, Romix could also be rebuilding and primarily is focused on building the back line. Which kind of makes sense, but it also... I think they're probably expecting that the rest of their team would help out with that, but maybe not. Maybe that was the idea. It was just, you know what? Romix, they're going to be handling all the metal extractors, back line stuff, and everyone else handles damage, I guess? I mean, still, it seems kind of surprising that there was, it's been this long for another Mason to come in, but another Mason has come in over to the center of the map, so Romix should be able to get that sorted pretty quickly. Oh. Yeah, Masper pointing out in chat that they pointed out in the in-game chat that they couldn't think of a reason not to go full front until they realized that the backline expansions were being completely neglected, which, yeah, that that is a thing, like... Going full front is great to make it a lot easier to claim backline expansions because you've kind of you've put your real power right at the front line. So your opponent has to go through your main power base in order to get to the actual resources, like the juicy, juicy resource insights. But you can't really do that without like actually getting the juicy juicy resource insights claimed for your team. Otherwise you're kind of wasting your time. Which is why the Western team has been doing so much better. Like, they started a bit farther back, but they've been more consistently and solidly expanding as they go. And they pretty much have their entire half of the map. It's not going to be easy to break through that. And to be fair, the upside of doing this is defense in depth. If, for instance, Chum Toad gets through all of Bakuhatsu defenses right here, breaks through all these forces, now they have to break through the Lotuses and whatever gets through the factory. And then they have to fight the factory. So the entire time, they're constantly... They're grinding for every single inch. Whereas... On the other hand, if someone were to attack Mumble Clan's bases and get in, say Flumby manages to break through Catastrophe and deals enough damage to break through to get to the factory, once they take the factory out, this entire section is totally open. So going full front is definitely easier from an early game perspective in terms of, you know, making sure the defense works. Like, so your opponent is dissuaded from trying to get the back lines. But it is a very flimsy defense because your factory is in the front lines, and so you're, if your opponent is able to take that out, then there's nothing left. You're done. So it's a slower build if you start in the back and then move to the front, but it's a much safer build. And that's exactly what West Team has done, and it's really paid off. Mumble Clan now finally catching up and getting a little bit ahead based on Reclaim, but it's an even map split. And no real advantage was found for Mumble Clan because of their initial position. Flumi's commander, on the other hand, under more fire, but nice coming in here by Acid. Clearing out all the knights, and that basically saves the day. One raven! Nope, not even go down. I was like, one raven does go down, but no, it does not. No ravens go down. 
Free kills. Still, the important thing is Catastrophe has managed to push back Flimby. They didn't kill the commander, but they managed to reclaim the territory, so at the very least, they're back in business. Things have evened out. However, over the rest of the map, I mean, Bakuatsu and Acid are just completely dominating this outside. Chumtoad doing their best to hold the line, but it's not going to last for long. Like, so much additional pressure has been brought in. These knights are just going right into, into the killing trench. Getting one shot off before all the bulkheads rip them to pieces. For, unfortunately, this just is not enough firepower to really get in here. So, with that, more knights go down with really nothing to show for it. Same time, though, center of the map! The, five cranes! Five cranes all down thanks to raptors beautifully done there by Maj. That is the biggest thing to kill, because all those cranes would have been... Like, that would have been a bunch of defenses, that would have been a bunch of metal extractors, that would have been loads, like, 30 metal per second reclaim. That was a huge blow. Certainly should help stabilize things for Mumble Clan. Get, buys them a bit more time to set up their own defensive lines in the front line, buys them a bit more time just to generally get units built up that I'm to worry about breaking through defenses. I mean, there's still the chainsaw, but there's fewer, fewer builders actually working on it. So it's going to take that much longer. That gives Maj that much more room to maneuver. As that being said, though, Bakuatsu coming around the side with the array. The Impaler is taking out the Stinger once that's done. Oh, nice. Taking out the Caretakers, take out the Stinger even faster. But yeah, once that Stinger's gone, then it's just gone. It's done. It's over. That south side is going to be wide open. And Chumtoad and Maj working together, trying to set something up for Jumpbot Factory to hope for the best. But again, there is not a whole lot that can be done there. Paler comes in, and that is a dead stinger opening up the lines. That being said, the terraform wall might cause a few problems in that regard, but still, it's... Well, provide some defenses for the artillery, and also just generally provides the opening they need. But yeah, Chumstoad realizes all of this is lost, falling back. Still has to deal with a few gauss turrets, but not a whole lot that is going to challenge any area back at the same time over to the middle. Ravager Ripper Army coming through here, getting some some resistance from the Knights, but Knights do not have splash damage, so dealing with this sheer number of units is simply impractical. And over the very north, Flumby managing to retake all that territory to the north and push Catastrophe back to their base once again. And this is kind of what I mean. Catastrophe has nowhere to fall back to beyond that factory. So if that falls, there is nothing left. Oh, and Robix's commander goes down. Nice job with the Ravens. They are, however, all being lost in the process. Every single Raven has gone down. There's just corpses of Raven falling to the ground. One single Raven has survived that entire encounter. Another one is in production, but that was eight, eight or nine Ravens coming in there, and one leaves, thanks to those Raptors. That being said, Acid was prepared for this, has the Raptors of their own coming in to completely take air dominance, and they have succeeded at doing so. Air is entirely in Acid's hands. Now, same time, we have oh, even more. Oh, and that Geo plant's about to go down too. I mean, that's not a huge deal as far as damage. It's not a Mojo. It won't actually explode wide enough to kill everything. But still, opens everything up, and that is a huge blow. Gauss turrets down. Only a Lotus remains, and that south side has basically fallen. The Lump Ducks were lost in the process. Bakuatsu doesn't really have a lot of back and forth coming in. It's just streaming in now, but it's a little bit late, unfortunately. Still, Asset is full air control. They can throw in these the bombers coming in here. Should be able to take out everything. I mean, they can't find the Phantoms, but they can take out the Knights and maybe some artillery in the process as well. Ooh, but that... That Liko seriously just nailed the Ravens. I actually didn't realize that was possible, but apparently it is. Today we learned. Indy, however, is working to push the mid, and it's taking quite a bit of taking quite a bit of damage, but managing to push through regardless. 
Getting through a nice thin section of claws. Take out the stinger. That leaves a gauss turret and not much else. Still, India Ray trying to be cautious. But they are managing to do quite well. Flume becoming in its backup. With the Scorchers. Just should be able to take this out no problem. But yeah, ultimately though, they are still slowing Catastrophe's retake down. So, yeah, the north side is totally sorted. The south side now has broken. There it is. Oh. No, that's the Leco Death. Yeah, Chum Toad's Commander coming in here. And might not last too long. I mean, the hill has been broken. The, it can easily be taken now. And it has been taken. That opens everything up. Because that trench, once you can get past that trench, there's not a whole lot stopping them terrain-wise. So with that, a single Juggernaut is the only thing trying to save the day. Which admittedly is doing a pretty good job of it. Unfortunately, it's doing a pretty good job of it at the cost of all of the rest of the units here. Like, as in its own units, all the slings going down thanks to the Juggernaut pulling ducks into them. But, I mean, the sentiment is... The sentiment's there. Of course, I also point, should point out, it does damage itself when smashing units into itself. However, that is not going to be much in the way of defense. One more Raven should be able to come in here. 1,200... Actually, no, two more Ravens. Like two more ravens, but the one <laughs> back on to push mode, so getting away from those ravens, but it's still not enough. At the point is, it's not defending the ground. However, Bakuatsu not quite confident to push yet. It's giving some openings actually. Maj able to reclaim quite a bit though. That just provides up to half, essentially. Not a whole lot more you can do with that. So that is that. Bakuatsu and Ran Bakuatsu and Acid. I think Randy. Bakuatsu and Acid are just completely done here. They have taken over the south side. It's just a matter of time before they push through and finish that off. And once they do that, that's, again, opening up the bases. Look at what's being built, though. Hover Factor coming in here as well for Flumby. Hasn't really been used much, though. Spider being built up for Bakuatsu. Probably going to come in with crabs. Sorry, is that Bakuatsu? Yeah, it's Bakuatsu. Probably going to switch into crabs. Acid still going full on air. And maintaining air dominance. Doesn't want to take out the Leco though. Should be able to take out the opposing Raptors. And again, assert air dominance. Keeping Maj in a very awkward position. Leco's go down. Managed to get a little bit of air shot, but that's it. Maj essentially has nothing right now. So, with that, it's looking pretty bad. Jump Dots Commander. Jumping away, getting into the Juggernaut range, saving itself just barely. Close run thing, but it does work. Same time over the center. It's still working okay for Romex. They're managing to hold off reasonably okay, allowing Catastrophe to get some reclaim going, but... It's not a huge amount. Ultimately, that's not going to last for too long. What the heck was that Firewalker? Oh, I see. There it is. Jumped to its Firewalker. Well, to be fair... When is West spending its metal on? Because it looks like there's just a big gap in what's being produced. Okay, the hover's coming in here. We have Flume be sending up over to the north. But I don't see a whole lot else being built here. Like, where's India Ray's stuff? Oh, it's oh, they're swipping, switching into puppies. Prioritizing that instead of the mainline ground units. Okay, that's an interesting choice. Makes sense. I mean, you throw them in there, grab a bunch of reclaim off of that, and get a bunch of free puppies, deny reclaim, do a bunch of damage. It's not a bad idea. It's a little bit risky considering the units are so close that the puppies are just going to go for it or get killed. But it's a thought. It's a neat thought. So, though, Flumby has managed to at least take care of some more damage on the Gauss turrets. Just not quite enough. However, the south side, that looks like where things are going to break. Another assault coming in here. Maj's commander should go down shortly. Bulkhead's coming in here. 
Especially they take out the Juggernaut. That's going to be it. Chum Toad's commander taking some damage. And goes down a lot. And the Death Explosion kills off the Juggernaut. That opens everything up. That should be the south side broken. And if that breaks, there's not a whole lot behind it. Smosh's commander, a Phantom, Firewalker, and a Knight. It's basically the only thing that's keeping this area in East in Mumble Clan's possession. Otherwise, they are done. Jack Weber coming in here, doing his best to hold the line, and it's not doing a bad job. Takes care of one of the bulkheads, but still... Bakuatsu just continuing to stream in forces behind this, while Jacks are the only things that are being spat out by, by Chum Toad, and that's not going to last for too long. Ramax over, opening up Flumby, taking out the north or taking the north side area once again, looking to go for a push. Pretty lightly defended area too, so it's not a bad idea. It may not be enough to make up for the loss of the south side though. Ducks coming in for another assault. Should be able to take out the jacks by sheer numbers. And at the same time, of course, Acid still retains control over the air. Mosh still able to do basically nothing. Ducks come in here, look to take out the jacks, having a bit of trouble. Actually, managing very little, all things considered. Get a lot of scouting in, but not much more than that. Catastrophe, however, looking to throw in the towel. Maj... Or not, Ma not Maj. Romux, not able to do much with that north push, and that's that. Catastrophe realizes there's not much more they can do. They're kind of just grinding into a loss. Bit of an anticlimax there, but it does finish the job. And that is... That was Mumble Clan versus... No, it's just a big combination of teams. And so it goes. Well, anyhow, that is going to be that for the first match for today. So, stay tuned. We have another one. It's going to be a 3v3, and it's going to be on Mechan and Sonia. A map that I think... I don't think I've seen 3v3 played on, and I also think it would work well for 3v3. So I'm really excited to see this. It's also one that was played in the Palladium server, the Palladium event. So, it's all high-level players. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be... Should be interesting. Back in a minute.